Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Drive. Today we have a very iconic car that has been built for 43 years, since 1979. Wonderful looking G-Class. So before we get into the design and the details of the car, make sure to subscribe, make sure to like our stuff, share it, spread it with your friends. They need qualitative content so they have knowledge because nobody's providing you stuff we do. Let's go into the review. Let's start to look a little bit into detail what the G-Class is about and what makes it iconic so starting at the front we have indicators at the top of the car this very large bonnet with the mercedes logo in the middle and then this 3d mercedes logo here big bumper to protect you while going off-road then you have this large openings those roundish headlights with the washer fluid coming out of here cleaning the headlights then coming to the side those big side fenders and then this protective bar that is really here to protect you when going off-road and make the car a little bit more stable if you are on very extreme off-road tracks. Here AMG logo in silver and then something that is since 1999, since the first AMG came out of the G-Class. Those unbelievable exhaust pipes coming out. That's the typical G-Class sound when you open and close the door. I mean, you can really tell just by that sound that this is a G-Class. So the brakes are 40 millimeters in the front and 370 millimeters at the back. Those are 22 inch wheels, 295 width of the tire because this car is very heavy. It has 2.6 tons almost, so it has to brake. That's why we have those AMG performance brakes at the front and the back. There's no carbon ceramic uh, brake system because it's really not it's not, not necessary and you should go off-road with it. Let me open the bonnet and show you what this engine is all about. So, it's called the M177, basically the same engine that is used in the E63 and all of those cars. But here it's a 4-liter displacement, same thing. It's a V8, 4-liter, 585 horsepower and 850 newton meters of torque. It's capable of accelerating the car in 4.5 seconds to 100 and tops out at 220 kph so you could actually buy the amg driver's package and drive 240 with it but i mean the car is really big and heavy it's really not that necessary in my opinion but you can do whatever the hell you want to do first of all when sitting inside of this g-class it is very comfy of course those seats are very comfortable they cooled and heated seats you have massage function full electrical uh, uh, seats you can change the position however you want of course the steering wheel is also electrical then you have this leather package here all around the car even on top of the speedometer and the navigation system even those handlebars here and on the side are made uh, covered in leather very nice uh, details here in red the red seat belt for example also Alcantara on the steering wheel, aluminium flaps, so everything is kind of made beautifully. Then you have this carbon fiber here in the middle, carbon fiber on the top, under the tachometer, the speedometer, and here under the navigation system, so very nice. Made panoramic roof, of course, Burmester sound system, everything you need to know, everything you need to have in a luxurious car. The one thing that little, that, that stresses me out a little is the EVC clock. So basically when you buy your AMG, you get an EVC clock in the middle. But I don't understand why they didn't put the EVC clock here. Instead of putting the differential lock controls next to the air vents and not like in the G-Class, putting it up here where it would have place to, to be used. So you could press the differential. Other than that, very clean some things feel a little misplaced like this part here i mean it has very sharp angles and it kind of it doesn't match the squarish design of the g-class so it it kind of feels off place i'm not going to go into detail because we know what the car can do it has all bunch of stuff in there navigation apple carplay android uh, car whatever you want let's see how much space i have so first of all when entering the back you have to watch out to not burn your legs on the side pipes. Now listen to that sound. Very nice. I have plenty of room for my knees, plenty of room for my head. I have this kind of weird seating position because I feel like I'm in the second floor when sitting back in here and I really literally cannot see 
the uh, bonnet so although it's such a big bonnet i cannot see it from here other than that it's really comfortable those are beautiful seats beautiful materials leather seats of course stitchings everywhere in red you have this armrest you can put down here a third person could sit here and has the seat belt you have those air vents in front and you could for example also if you have children you could have like a screen here like an upgrade so i think it's time to take it for a drive welcome to the g-class a car born in 1979 and it was supposed to be a governmental car something that the government is going to use the police stations the military but then in 1993 people started getting a hold of it they started liking it and then it became a passenger car so it started as a g model it was built in graz by the way the same place as arnold schwarzenegger was born so we're driving through langstrasse which is basically like zurich's anus where all of the people that have decided to be in a dark spot are gathering and doing all of those crazy things you shouldn't do in switzerland you can actually choose what you want to become you want to become a criminal come and live here you want to become someone important go two kilometers to the other side of zurich <laughs> it's insane uh, anyway we're doing a car review so all of a sudden it was like a like a symbol of masculinity something that everybody would strive for a car that could do basically everything a car that was good in everything it did so people started using it and then it became a g class in 1993 they had to change the name because before it was the g model basically like the g model of uh, 911 but then in 1993 they changed the name to, to a g class uses like 16 liters 100 kilometers 16 liters of fuel and we got to a tunnel let me open the window for you let me put the car into manual mode <laughs> well <laughs> because I know how this engine sounds in a in a different AMG I would give it a rating of 6 out of 10 because when you drive the E63 this engine sounds a lot different and a lot louder but I think uh, it's a different use case so it's still it's still nice it's i mean it's really very powerful the powerful boost the first thing i notice is it has a very powerful engine but it handles really really interesting so the handling is of course like you would expect for a car that weighs 2.6 ton tons it really isn't that great amg tried to make it a little better they they made it somewhat stiffer and better to drive around corners but still it's not going to perform in any form or shape on the road it's a car for off-road drive it's really not even a car for a city drive just people misuse it still i have to say it is nice to drive on a normal road so i have put the exhaust to sports mode and you just hear it revving the engine up making some nice v8 sounds very nice when accelerating you hear the engine you feel the tct automatic nine gear shifting seeming less very nice but when you step on the throttle that car becomes something different the interesting thing is actually when you start accelerating and you didn't uh, turn off the esp for example it starts going all over the place it starts going in all different directions instead of the directions you really want to drive in so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to put it in sport plus i'm going to turn off the esp i'm going to leave it in automatic and just give it a good go so let me close the roof and open the window a little bit let me accelerate now I mean 
it's such a big car it has so much power 850 newton meters of torque but it's still it it feels very powerful but after 100 kph you can really tell that it's it doesn't it has so much wind resistance it's really not a fast car it tops out at 220 so it's it's really it's incredible how they made it perform like this uh, although the car is so big interestingly while driving on the autobahn for example now we are in ninth gear and revving at a thousand and one hundred rpms at a hundred kilometers so that is very interesting if i let loose of the steering wheel we're all gonna die all right so what i'm gonna do is i'm not gonna let loose of the steering wheel because it goes all over the place i'm turning off dsp now nobody needs that all right now go <laughs> oh my god i'm really i really am in love with this m177 engine it is incredible it is so good to drive it has so much power i really love it i really like the engine a lot all right friends we cannot just leave the g-class without talking about its off-road cap uh, capabilities so we have three buttons here that is that are here to lock the differential so the first button we would use is actually down here this would be the low range button to engage the transmission into a low range uh, mode so we can have more wheel slip rate with more power at the lower range then you have to press the first one when you press the first button here it gives you three uh, off-road types sand trail and rock the differential is now fully locked the front wheels and the back wheels have the same power of 50 percent power distribution i can do now the second one second button when i press that the back the rear axle is locked fully 100 percent so the rear wheels are uh, rotating with the same rpm as the engine left and right no difference at all you can also lock your front wheels fully that would give you kind of the uh, possibility to lock all the wheels so all the wheels rotate the same speed so you can get out of the sand for example or out of a very interesting zone but the steering wheel has a compromise so you cannot turn your wheels as much and that's about it that's why the g-class is still to this day one of the best suv cars ever all right friends let me cover some questions you asked on instagram well first of all the first question is the interior luxurious enough for the price well the car costs 220,000. so i would say we have a lot of luxury we have a lot of premium parts like carbon fiber and leather but there are some angles that i really don't like for example this middle part covering the aluminium here and then plastic everywhere you know like the side panels here this middle part and very sharp corners so I wouldn't I, I, I'm not giving it a point is it true it is very noisy inside because of the flat windshield well it's not that noisy because we have a lot of noise protection but if it if it would be like a utility g-class like a gov governmental one it would be pretty noisy in here which one is best g-wagon or s600 well those are two completely different different cars one is a luxurious car and the other one is really for SUV drive so depending on the circumstances but i personally i think i'd go with the s600 v12 very luxurious car is it available in electric not now there is a concept car coming out 2024 and it's called the eqg so uh 2024 electric g model is coming up how do you feel in a g-wagon well i feel pretty good it's a big big car you're above anyone else and it's kind of a little bit different to drive through city because it's such a big and white car how tall do you need to be to close the bonnet well that's um that's a reference to a tiktok and reel i did where i closed the bonnet of a volvo you don't have to be two meters tall it is easy to close i could close it with 185 so if you want to join the community and ask some questions come to the instagram page follow us there we're going to ask the questions on instagram and cover them in youtube videos and also in real sometimes thank you very much have a great one